Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Engineering at Home Challenge. If you haven't seen our other activities already, we have a whole series on our YouTube channel in all sorts of different areas of engineering, so feel free to check those out. Some of you may know that Smallpiece has its headquarters here in Leamington Spa, but did you know that Leamington was actually home to the world's first ever lawn tennis club? The UK has also been home to some amazing tennis players like Johanna Conta, Tim Henman, Andy Murray and Fred Perry, and some incredible engineers like Cosby Smallpiece, our founder, Richard Arkwright and James Dyson. And this week we're going to be looking at how engineering and tennis come together to make a tennis racket. You might not have thought before about the engineering behind a tennis racket, but actually a huge amount of thought has been put in to make sure that racket is perfect for the sport. In an average tennis match, the ball could hit the racket about 500 times, with an average speed of somewhere between 70 to 80 miles per hour. So that's a huge amount of impact on that racket over and over again. So that racket has to be incredibly strong to withstand that. The racket also has to be incredibly lightweight so the player can strike the ball that many times and as quickly as possible. They also have to be aerodynamic and well balanced so they can move through the air swiftly and smoothly. Even with all that engineering, top professional tennis players can still go through maybe 50 tennis rackets a year. So today we're going to be looking at how you can make a tennis racket really strong and well balanced. So I've made two different tennis rackets and I want to talk about the differences between them and what difference that makes to the strength of the racket. So I've got a larger tennis racket here and as I hold it out by the handle, you'll see it starts to sag because the head is really heavy and I don't have enough support between the handle and the net. However, in my smaller model, you'll see as I hold it out, it holds pretty much flat. Another thing we want to look at is strength. So with my larger tennis racket, I'm gonna try and put a tennis ball on the net and let's see how it copes. So it is holding it, but you can see there's a large dip there and it's not gonna last for very long if I keep it there. So I'm gonna take that off. And now let's have a look with the smaller racket. That's completely stable and I feel like I could stand here for a very long time and it's not going to break. And that's because of the shorter handle and I've got lots of support inside there, as you'll see as I show you how I built this racket. If you want to know a little bit more about the science behind why that works, have a look at something called Moments. And if you're doing Science GCSE, that's definitely going to be something you'll cover. So let's see how I made it. For this activity, you're going to need a large cardboard sheet. I'm using an Amazon parcel for this. You'll want some string, some bamboo skewers, a pencil and plenty of sellotape. The first thing you want to do is get your large sheet of cardboard. So I'm just going to separate this parcel out and then cut it in half so that I have two sheets. Then I'm going to draw out the design for my racket. Have a think about how big you want it to be and the shapes you want to use. And then cut this out on both sheets so that I have two identical cardboard frames. I'm using a craft knife for this but scissors work just fine. If you are going to use a craft knife, make sure you have adult permission and supervision. The weakest part of the tennis racket is where the handle meets the head where the net goes, so it's really important to strengthen this section as best as possible. Now in structural engineering it's well known that triangles are the strongest shape and offer the most support, so I'm going to consider this in my design and use diagonal elements to strengthen the frame. Before I stick these down I'm just going to mark where I want them to go so I can now draw the hole for the net and make sure it's in a good position. Once I'm happy with the size and position of the net, I'm going to cut this out and then I can stick down my frame supports. And I'm using plenty of sellotape to make sure they're all secured in place. Then we can strengthen the rest of the frame in the same way. Now I'm going to cut out the hole for the net in the other frame, but make sure both holes are identical. And on our second frame, we're going to create the net. So I'm going to use string for this, but as always, you can use whatever you have available. First, I want to create a frame to support the net. So I'm going to create a rectangle out of bamboo skewers and stick these down to the cardboard frame. Make sure to only stick these down at the end of the skewers so that the middle section can lift away from the frame as this is where you'll thread the string. Then I can take the string and thread this under the skewer and across the hole in the racket to the other side.
make sure the end of the string is really secure. Then I'm going to cut a long piece of string and keep threading the string up and down the racket until the hole is completely covered. Make sure to use lots of sellotape to secure this in place. Next we want to strengthen our net by adding string going the other direction. I'm going to weave these in and out of the other strings for additional strength support as this creates lots of friction between the strings. Like before, do the same thing all along the racket. Once my net is finished, I want to think about any other places that have not been strengthened and might need support, like the handle of my racket. So I'm going to use some bamboo skewers to add some additional strength here. When I'm happy that my frames have plenty of support, I can stick these both together, sandwiching the net in the middle of them. So then you should end up with something like this, a functioning tennis racket. And as I said, see if you can try and balance a tennis ball on there and maybe even more if you've got a good strong design. So for my design, I used cardboard, string, sellotape, lots of sellotape and some bamboo skewers inside there to strengthen the design. In your design, try and come up with something a bit different. See what other materials you could use for the net. You can use string if you want to, but why not try something else? And what else could you use to strengthen your design as well? As always, it would be great to see what you guys come up with, so share with us on social media your tennis rackets in action, and tune in next week for the next challenge.